I'm Ashlyn Penny, here with Cheyenne Randall, a mixed media artist. Yeah, so uh, my name is Cheyenne Randall. I'm, I'm, a, um, I'm an artist. I, uh, you want a little background on, on who I am and where yeah. I'm from and stuff? Yes, yeah. great. Um, I don't know how far back you want to go, but I was born in Minneapolis, Minnesota, um, 1978. And um, I was, uh, was raised in Minneapolis until I was nine years old and then moved out to Seattle, Washington from the time that I was nine until I was um, about 21 years old. And uh, yeah, what do I, where, do I, where do I start? My dad was an artist. He was a uh, visual artist, um, two-dimensional artist. He did a lot of um, like drawings, graphite drawings, paintings. Um, he's Native American. He's an uh, enrolled member of the um, Sioux tribe. Uh, from Rosebud Indian Reservation in South Dakota. Um, my mom is not native, uh, and um, but I was mostly raised by my mother, and um, she uh, she was just always really encouraging for me to just focus on my artwork. Um, I started to do artwork when I was really young. I was always the friend that that was drawing super trippy drawings or you know things like that. Um, I still have my high school binder in my uh, studio. It's full of drawings and not homework. Um, I uh, It was really hard for me to pay attention in school. Um, I think I had what is considered a, a learning disability. Um, and um, so, yeah, right after high school, I just sort of, sort of focused on my artwork, but then, you know, in your 20s, you have to work. So I ended up working um, in the trades uh, I was a carpenter for many years, house painter, um, kind of traveled, lived all over the country doing that until um, 2014 when my career really started to take off, um, partially thanks to Instagram, to social media. So that, and then that brings us up to about the last six or so years, seven years of just um, kind of just working in that realm, so. So social media really impacted your career? Social media did. It really did. <clears throat> I, um, before that, in uh, 2014, before that, I was working on a lot of my mixed medias. I was doing a lot of um, sort of uh, um, a lot of my native, um, a lot of like uh, cultural based work, um, pencil drawings, graphite drawings, mixed media, and um, and they were, they were, I was selling them, they were moving. Um, I'd post them on Facebook. People would be interested in them and I'd sell them. And then I sort of figured out that uh, Instagram had, it, Instagram was really new to me that, I mean, I think it was new to everybody um, in like 2014, 2013. And, um, and I started doing these Photoshop things with the tattoos. And then that's when they started getting like people like, pretty much like in a series of like a couple of months, I started noticing like, I mean, I was down there like around like 20 likes per post and stuff like that. And then it just shot up to like 200. And, um, and then, yeah, in 2014 is when it went viral. Um, it was like uh, something happened. I don't know. I woke up one morning and they were, um, I my friend said that I was on like the Yahoo cover page talking about the shop tattoo series and, um, I didn't really do anything. I didn't try to like make it happen or I was just making these these images and um, and then some some somewhere it got picked up and it was like the way the media works is is that they just basically copy and paste each other's stories. Um, a lot of it ended up being like clickbait and just kind of like like it was one of them was in the Daily Mail um, and like the comment section everyone hated it and they just were like tearing me apart and uh, it was like a really disturbing experience. <laughs> if, you, if, if I had to describe it, it was just really strange to see people uh, talking about your work and, and talking about you. And um, but it was it's what it's what shot it off. It's basically like people started going to my Instagram from there, and I went from like two thousand followers to like you know I don't know like fourteen thousand in like a day, and it just kind of kept going from there. Then it was like a a number of celebrities started to like share my work and then it kind of went even further from there. So social media really is what did it. 
That's amazing. I mean, I love the variety of your artwork on Instagram. So thank you, thank you. Uh, can you describe more specifically the kind of art that you create? The kind of art that I create, yeah. I mean, what what you see mostly in my social media is what um, is the digital work. Um, I think that's kind of what I'm known for is the digital work. Um, I'm starting to. I think I'd love to be a little bit more known for like my uh, the wheat paste work that I do uh, and the street art kind of stuff that I do but it usually all starts with the computer um, even a lot of my paintings these days start like in Photoshop I'll take a uh, take an idea concept and I'll sort of work it out um, either on like my in procreate or in Photoshop and uh, but yeah mostly it's the it's the shop tattoos work that people have, have you know they'll recognize me for that. And What would you say was the type of training or schooling that went into this career? The type of training or schooling, I, you know, <clears throat> I didn't, uh, I would say that the type of training or career, I, I mean, I really didn't intend for, um, I mean, I didn't go to school. I, I went to high school. I had, like I said earlier, I kind of had a really difficult time uh paying attention remembering things learning um i ended up going to like an alternative high school um which was basically um like a high school for stoners <laughs> it was like a pass or fail they didn't do grade point averages and um but it was a great school it was a uh, it was more of like conversational classes and um which was great but i didn't do any college i wanted to go to art school i wanted to go to like a fine art school um they uh it just it just didn't it, those were really expensive and i didn't have the money and i didn't have the uh even being an enrolled member in my tribe i didn't have um there was not appropriate funding for that they want to mostly fund natives to go to like medical school or law school or things like that which is totally understandable um so as as a carpenter and as a as a painter is really what i focused on in my 20s um i guess you could say like that that trained me for a lot of my installation work that I do. I do some pretty massive installation works. Um, some of them are like 30 by 50 feet and they're a lot more difficult than I think a lot. Sometimes people think it's pretty simple what I do, but it's actually pretty difficult to organize, um, organize an installation like that and then, and then accomplish it. And, um, there's a lot of measuring and, and planning and, and stuff like that. So the trades really helped me with that. But, um, you know, I, there's nothing could really prepare me for, um, for, you know, social media there. It, that wasn't really a thing. I don't even know. I mean, I'm, I think probably nowadays there's like classes you can take for that to like, um, you know, manage your social media or whatever. Um, I, I don't know. I, I was, I do everything really unorthodoxly anyway. So it's like, um, um, it, it's all just sort of happened. <laughs> if that makes sense. It sounds like you've accomplished a lot. Um, are there any moments or accomplishments that stand out to you in your career? Um, yeah, I mean, there's a few, there's some of them are, um, some of them are, are like actual events. Um, these things that like, you know, are pretty, pretty wild. Like, um, in like 2015, after everything kind of went viral or whatever, I sort of developed a, a connection with, um, an actor, James Franco. And he, um, he and I kind of went back and forth and talked about like doing like a collaboration. So, and he ended up coming up to Seattle where I was living at the time and doing a, um, we did like a mural together for this gallery. And then um, that was like this giant piece on this wall that we, that we ended up selling to somebody from Portland. And um, then I would go to LA like a bunch and, and I was sort of teaching him how to like wheat paste for a minute. And it was really interesting because it was like, um, I think he was kind of interested in like, uh, what like the art scene was kind of about or whatever, you know, he does paintings and, and it was, it was weird. It was funny, but it was, I mean, it's, it stands out for sure. I mean, you know, having James Franco get on a plane to come up and do a mural with you is pretty trippy. Um, I lost touch with him, which is fine. You know, I'm not really super interested in the Los Angeles. Like I did a lot of like trips back and forth to LA to do like wheat paste stuff. And, um, I kind of got caught up in like this after like, you know, when stuff like that happens, your ego gets kind of inflamed a little bit, you know, and you just sort of, it's hard to recognize that like 
people are interested in, in what you do and they're interested in like being around it and then recognizing like sort of what that what that does to your ego and so um being able to sort of stand back from that and get away from that was was that was sort of uh that was sort of an accomplishment as well um certain things like um getting sober so i have a chemical i've been a i've been an alcoholic a lot of my 20s um which probably you know was a lot of the reason why i didn't my art wasn't able to take off earlier but um being able to, to put that behind me i stopped drinking in 2018 which is a huge accomplishment i think that did a lot for my career um it did a lot for my relationships and, and my ability to work um focus stay clear-headed um and just uh i did a residency program in 2000 uh, i did that in 2017 for the herd museum in arizona which was which is where i went down and basically the herd museum is a um native american uh fine arts and contemporary um museum and they have works all the way back down to like it, they have like basically they have like archival um, excuse me um, pieces they found in in like from like thousands of years ago down in their basement up to like current painters today in the native world and they basically had me come down there and just we paste the hack out of their whole facility just all over their the outside of their building inside their facility and that was pretty um, that was pretty unheard of, I think, for somebody to come down there and like basically do street art all over the museum. Uh, so that was really cool. Um, yeah, and mostly just, uh, it's just been really fun to be able to like, um, just do, like I just did the Wide Open Walls Mural Festival here in Sacramento. Um, and uh, just just be able to continue to work. And, and, you know, there's something that happens when you like, when you go through this sort of viral thing and then you, you continue to work, there's like this sort of like, there's like this weird pressure to like, you know, are you still relevant? Do people still recognize your work? And it's always important. I mean, I always re remind myself like every single day that every single day there's somebody who just stumbled upon my artwork and that more people don't know who I am than do. And that there's there's plenty of reasons to get up in the morning and work and to, and to, and to keep like creating new work. And, and um, you know, my biggest, my biggest accomplishment I think is, is really is just connecting with people through my art. Um, being able to do that on the daily is a, is a pretty awesome deal. Um, what or who would you say is your inspiration for what you do now? Who is who? What or who is my inspiration for what I do now? Um, you know, this this might be a little esoteric, but it's it's very true. Um, I would say that my ancestors are my biggest inspiration, um, and that is. That is because being Native American, I have um, there's this there's sort of a, a lot of, a lot of people don't understand necessarily that um, you know we we don't have long hair and we don't ride horses all the time and and that we're not necessarily even though I did go through um, some, you know some heavy chem chemical dependency in my life um, that we're not all um, you know. We're not all just big nose drunks, and we we're we're here and we're working and we're we're trying to make a better place for you know a, a better future for our generation for the next generations, um, and you know and I and I think we just the idea of trying to make my ancestors proud is is one of the things that um, that really motivates me. My father's no longer alive, so you know I like to believe that he's he's still watching and and still you know rooting for me and. Um, I could say things like you know I could I could say things like you know uh, like Shepherd Fairy and um, like Jr. Um, they're huge inspiration. They're 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 big, you know. They inspire me a lot. Um, but really, what what motivates me is is making my ancestors proud. What has been your favorite piece to create so far? Probably. I, I mean, I think probably. That's a tough one because some of my favorite pieces were 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 from you know back in like 2014 when um, I would just get in the car and I would just drive to like find an abandoned house and just spending the afternoon with like I'd have my dog in the car and just spending the afternoon looking for abandoned structures. Um, I found I would find I found this place this place in South Seattle. Um, 
that I would go to quite a bit and I would just sort of bring Charlie, my dog, and um, I'd park like two blocks away and then I'd like sneak into the property and um, it was just this giant barn and these like abandoned houses that literally like the interior of the rooms were still left the, the way they were like like it, they looked like they were left like that like a hundred years ago and there was like wood tables in there with like little plates on the table and and this was just like right outside of seattle and um and that was sort of my playground that was sort of where i just like i, I did like a stencil on the wall and i did like we paste all over the barn and um that kind of stuff is like my my sort of some of my favorite stuff that I've done. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, if you go if you scroll deep into, into the into the Indian Giver Instagram, you, you'll start to see some of that stuff. I know it takes a while, but in like 2015, 2000, like 14, like around there is when I was really starting to just sort of play with like the pasting the West stuff, and and a lot of that was for me it was a lot of fun. I would drive out to like Montana and just like find these abandoned places and just we paste them so that was and that was just all on like just just for fun you know there was no there was no projects there was no nobody was paying me to do it or it was just like gosh let's just go out into the country and just do some we pasting you know yeah that's amazing that you can make art out of anything yeah yeah would you say you experience artist block and if so how do you overcome it uh, yes absolutely um how do I, you know, overcoming artist block sometimes is, um, involves getting under a blanket and watching like, you know, a whole bunch of like really garbage TV. <laughs> I don't know. I, um, I, it's, I struggle with it all the time. Um, I think especially with like, um, you know, the whole like quarantining thing that went down and, and, and the way social media is structured, you feel a lot of times this pressure to be creating content or or to be uh, prolific in these like, you know, like great artists make great art when like the world's falling apart kind of thing. And and I found quite the, the opposite um, experience, which has been a little bit deflating, which is like, I just get kind of depressed and um, I don't feel like I'm I'm tapped into like I think a lot of times artists um, they have like a special like like landline to like this creative well and sometimes I feel like it's the, it's just not there and um, I can say that I know that when I get off my butt and I exercise um, a lot of times getting you know off my butt and, and moving my body helps a lot. Um, but you know, I don't know. I, there's been times when I've been able to go into the studio and just make a bunch of garbage art and just know that that's fine. It hits the floor. And as long as I'm moving my body and making something that like something will come out of that. Um, but, um, but yeah, it's uh, really a lot of times I think what it, what's meant to happen is, is that as an artist, you go through really creative periods. And then when you're not feeling it, it's 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 more about accepting it and being okay with it, and knowing that like there's you're not in a race, you're not like um, there's nothing saying that you have to create something like magical today that you can just sort of sit with like this period of time where you're not really feeling creative, because what's happening is is that you're sort of rebuilding your creative, you create all those creative connections and all those things that are that are that that create the artwork to begin with, they're resting and they're like you need to sort of just have that sort of like low period. Um, and that if, if we don't look at it like as a sort of creative block, but as a sort of creative break, um, then, and just trusting that it comes back uh, is, a, is a big part of the process too. And lastly, what advice would you give for any aspiring artists in your type of field? Advice, um, I would say for sure like, um, you know, like I've, I've said this before and I, and I, and I do feel this way and I know it's hard way, especially it sort of contradicts what I just said, but creating something every day is pretty important. Um, like at least, you know, trying, um, but especially in the beginning, I mean, I think like I can, it's, it's, I can say that a little bit now. Um, 
I mean, I still have a ways to go. I'm, I've got, there's, there's paintings inside of me that have yet to be made. And so I know that I have a ways to go. I don't, I don't feel that, that I've made it by any means necessarily. But um, when I first started off, I was um, sort of obsessive about it. And I sort of just like attacked it, you know? Um, I think that if you want to be seen and you want your work to be kind of, you kind of have to make so much of it that it like, it may annoy some people. Um, but there's, there's sort of like a, there's this, you have to just really like, just go after it. You know what I mean? Um, I, my suggestion, obviously you guys are in high school. Um, you know, as, as, as you age, life will come at you harder. Um, and there were, there's going to be a ton of distractions. There's going to be a ton of things that, that come towards you that, you know, they're kind of important, you know, some of them, like you have to learn life the way it comes at you, but um, staying, staying, you know, out of the bars is going to be a big one. If you want to make it as an artist, like um, kicking it in the bars with your friends and stuff like that stuff's going to come at you in your twenties. And that stuff is just, it ends up being just a huge waste of time. Um, art school. I can't speak for art school. I mean, you know, but I would just say just create as much as you can and it, you know, however bad you want it, but however bad you want it to happen is, is up to you. I mean, it, or however, you know, um, it's really hard for me to describe, but you just have to just, um, I don't know. You just have to work. You just have to make a lot of content. You know, you have to make a lot of work.